So since its release in February with the 4.0 version of Binary Ninja, I've been using the AI LLM Assistant plugin that was produced by Vector35 called Sidekick in order to speed up my malware reverse engineering process. And we did this over a number of stream series, which I'll link here. And while I was working on this video, they also released the version 1.0 of Sidekick. So I'll be linking that in the description below. Be sure to check out that blog post because it goes over some additional functionality, which I did not cover in this video. Throughout a beginner reverse engineering stream series, we took a look at a 4px malware sample that we fully reverse engineered using IDA. And then in another stream, we looked at automatically reverse engineering this with as many tools as possible, including Sidekick. So if you wanna see how this malware sample works in granular detail, then I would recommend checking out those stream series. So with that background, now let's jump into the video. So once Sidekick is installed, which is done through the plugin manager here. So if I just go to manage plugins, then you can see that there is this wonderful plugin manager, which you can search for Sidekick. And this is basically just a one click install and it does everything for you. So once that's done, then you'll have a few panes on the left hand side here that can be selected using these pane icons. So the first is this assistant pane, which you can essentially use as a chat interface to interact directly with the large language models within the context of the database itself. So that's what's cool about this is that you can essentially ask it questions about the database that you are using to reverse engineer with in order to get answers back from the large language models. And then the second most important pane here that is within the Sidekick UI is this Sidekick Suggestions icon here. And if I click that, then we can see we have a Suggestions pane now that is being shown. So this is significant because as you navigate throughout the database, so for example, if I go back to our start function here, you will see that a bunch of new suggestions are made automatically. So as you navigate throughout the database, you will have your function that you are currently in highlighted in bold here, and then you will have a number of suggestions. So automatically, these suggestions have been provided here for the start function where there is a bunch of dead store elimination that can occur. So using the Binary Ninja intermediate languages, specifically in this case, the high level intermediate language, it has detected that there are these superfluous or unneeded variables here, and therefore it can do dead store elimination. So in order to apply one of these suggestions, for example, I can right click and click apply. So obviously that wasn't super exciting, but if I select all of them, click apply, then we can see it just eliminated a whole bunch of dead variables that were effectively not doing anything in this function. So a more important suggestion that we just saw pop up here is the name, the callee functions. So if I click apply, then we can see in the bottom right hand side here, the large language models and Psychic are working together in order to create a bunch of different function names for these functions that are called from our start function. So if we, for example, click on this detect virtual machine environment, if you are a seasoned reverse engineer or you are a seasoned malware analyst, you will already see a few interesting things here that you need to pay attention to. So first and foremost, we have a call to create file A that is being made for the physical drive zero. So this is getting a handle to the physical drive zero. And then we can also see that there is these strings that are being referenced in this function here. So we can see one's a Kimu string, one is a virtual string, and one is a VMware string. So for those of you who have done some malware versus engineering before, you will know that these are common strings that are checked by malware in order to determine whether or not it is within a virtual environment. So Sidekick has automatically picked up on these strings and the acquisition of the physical drive zero handle and the use of device IO control here in order to create the function name automatically detect virtual environment. So pretty cool. So if we look down here, we can see a few other functions have been made. This create process with startup info function. We can see that this again is calling Windows APIs. So create process A with a number of different parameters. Not too descriptive in this context, but it is useful that this 
function name was created for us and we don't have to do it. Again, if we look at some other things here, we can see, okay, these are primarily being named based on the Windows API function. So for example, this create and manage threads function is being named that because of these create thread calls. And then we can see an interesting example here where we have generate random alphanumeric strings where we have a call to rand being made here. And I believe based on the modulus that's being applied here. So like this is adding a, a character to this modulus, which if I change the display type back here, then we can see that it's modding on the length of the English alphabet and then adding a. So again, without me interacting with any of this code, it determined that it is indeed generating an alphanumeric string. I don't know if that is true in this instance because it is using 26, but regardless, it's still pretty interesting. So other things that we can see here, manage files and registry entries. So we can see a whole bunch of different things. We have that call to detect virtual machine environment. So this is actually doing a whole bunch of different functionality. So this is one of the limitations that it is important to talk about is the overall context of the function cannot really be expressed in this function name, right? So that's a good segue into looking at some different functionality of Sidekick where we can go to plugins, Sidekick, and then I can click on add function comment. And then what this will do is it's actually going to create a function comment that attempts to summarize the functionality of this function. So this function appears to be a malicious code and performs various malicious activities such as copying, moving files, creating registry entries, and executing additional components to establish persistence and carry out further malicious actions. So that's pretty cool. If we look at why well, probably thinks it's malicious, well, we have these detect virtual machine and create and execute batch file to delete files. But in addition to that, we have a bunch of other Windows API calls, again, that can probably lead it to guess that that might be occurring here. Again, pretty impressive that it is determining that it is indeed malicious. So for example, in this context, this is creating a Windows service that is being used for persistence. So that was mentioned here for persistence to carry out further malicious actions. It is also copying and moving files, so that's correct. So pretty cool. If we go into this function, for example, create and execute batch file to delete files, this is technically correct, but in this instance, it's actually using a batch script that it's creating to delete itself. So again, if we want to be complete sticklers, we can, but it has the gist of what this function is doing. So if we go back here. So certain functionality that it did not pick up on, which is important to make note of, is it's creating a mutual exclusion here, which is important to make note of if you are a malware analyst. And we can also see here that a bunch of threads are being created. So if I go to this first thread, we can see more malicious functionality that is being executed by the malware. And as we can see on the left-hand side here, there's again, the suggestion of name callee functions. And if I hit that, we can see a few other functions were renamed here, mainly this manage files and create shortcuts. And in this instance, so, Again, this doesn't really have the contextual awareness to know that this is actually a piece of malware. So, but it did pick up on it on the previous function. But again, the overall context of the entire database, I don't believe is being kept within the context of the large language model, at least the local one that's being used. So again, I don't know if you can say, hey, this is malware and then it'll know. But in this instance, this is actually a USB worm. So it'll create these LNK files and auto run files in order to pop propagate across USBs. So the fact that it picked up on the LNK creation, the shortcuts creation is interesting. Again, we have these automatically named functions. So generate random alphanumeric strings, which is pretty cool. So we're getting a pretty good overall overview of what is happening here. But so on the left-hand side here, again, we have a bunch of different variable name renaming suggestions. So let's do that. So let's apply all of these. So I can select the function that all of these suggestions are applied for and then it highlights all of them, which is pretty nice. Then I can right click and hit apply. And then as we can see, a whole bunch of different variables were changed. So we have like these lower and high bits that were automatically changed. We have this stream name, which was automatically changed. Again, not groundbreaking, but still better than having to mark those up yourself. So for example, 
In order to demonstrate how this assistant works, I can say something like what extensions are targeted by this function, like you would with ChatGPT or another large language model chat interface. And then this is going to essentially take the code within the section, send it to a number of large language model APIs and then come up with an answer. So here again, we can see that the manage files and create shortcuts function targets the following extensions, and then it gives us all the types of extensions. So pretty cool. So it's again, fully aware of the context of the database and what information is contained within it. So if I said, this is malicious worm functionality, what do you think this function is doing? Then we might get a different type of response here. So it says the manage files and create shortcuts function exhibits behavior consistent with a malicious worm. At this specific location, the function is checking if we can allocate memory for a new string, potentially for a file extension or name stored in data 406798. This is part of a larger pattern where the function searches for files with the extension LNK VBS bat SCR or whatever. So again, this is kind of hitting the mark in that uh, create shortcuts and possibly modifying auto run configurations to ensure worm is executed upon certain actions like inserting the USB drive. So this is correct, but the reason it's actually looking for these different file types is it's replacing them with an LNK file that executes the malware that is copied to a hidden directory on the USB drive. So again, this is hard for a large language model to grasp. And again, this is a huge function in this context, but still pretty interesting what we can glean from the large language model. So if we go back here and we go up one again, we can go back to our threads function here and we can navigate to this 401490 function. And here we can see a bunch of different things. So let's again, look at the suggestions and see what it's suggesting. So let's do some dead store elimination and then we get a bunch of variable renaming operations. So I'm just gonna right click and hit apply. And then again, we get some clipboard data and some nice strings here. So this is the core malicious functionality or one of the core malicious components of this piece of malware. This is effectively a clipboard hijacker or a clipboard jacker, or whatever. There's a bunch of different names for this now. But essentially what it's doing is it's looking for specific patterns using a heuristic in order to determine whether or not a cryptocurrency address is being copied to a clipboard. So in this instance, we have, if I hit the R key here, we can see that there's a bunch of different characters that are being checked for within the clipboard periodically in this while loop. And then that's being used to look for clipboard hijacking functionality. So let's see if the large language models can figure this out. So thus far we have the function name validate and copy strings to clipboard. But what if I say this is malicious clipboard hijacking functionality? What clipboard? contents is it looking for and replacing. Again, it's able to extract information from the database, but it is unable to determine what types of addresses these are. So say we wanted to extract, can you extract all of these replacement strings from the database for me? So again, Pretty cool, it's actually able to extract that information for whatever reason it truncated it here, but um, it basically says for the input string starting with one and three, then we get that replacement string for the replacement strings T and Z, then we get this, this replacement string. And these are essentially cryptocurrency addresses that abide by these specified heuristics. So pretty cool. Say we also wanted to programmatically extract this information then we can say something like using the binary ninja Python API, how would I extract all strings that are replaced in the clipboard from this function? So not only can we extract information using this chat interface or ask questions about the database itself, we can also ask for help with the Binary Ninja Python API in order to extract information from the database or 
deal with certain information. So I'm very curious what it's going to provide here. So here we have some code that's provided in Markdown, which is also a, another nice feature. And essentially we have the start address being the current address that we're in. So 401230. Then we have the binary view get function at, and then the provided address. And then we have the blocks that are being iterated on then we're, it's basically looking for the assignment to the string variable and then it's checking for a particular high level operation of a const pointer and then basically it just extracts that information so say we copied and pasted this into a snippet here so this snippet editor plugin basically just gives us a way of creating small script snippets that we can then run against our current database. So I'm just gonna call this extract crypto addresses.py. Then we paste this and then we get a exception here. So it looks like we get up until this point. So if we do some print debugging here. So I don't know if this was a hallucination of the LLM. I suspect it was. But the only way that I know how to get this is if I do the tokens and get that string. I wonder if there's a variable name attribute here that I can use to acquire that. So again, this looks like it was probably a hallucination of the large language model, unless I don't know what I'm doing. So I'm gonna go back here. And then this is the original code that the large language model provided us with, but I'm going to make that correction. So I'm gonna put in var name and I'm gonna hit run. And it looks like it's trying to access this high level IL struct field. So if I print out what instruction that is, I suspect it's not the instruction we want. So then, yeah, it's like this result.b is equal to zero. So one way to get around that, which isn't great, but we can just do a try block until we get to the type of instruction that we want. And then this should work. So here you can see then we get the resulting cryptocurrency addresses. So make, to make that a little bit cleaner, I'll stop printing out this instruction and then we get that. So again, the large language model got us most of the way there. Um, it looks like it might've had a hallucination on that desk dot name, but it looks like the rest of the code worked. So pretty impressive. So other things that Sidekick is really good at is recognizing patterns and constants. So in this function, I can say, what does this function do? Memory allocation is made. Um, there's a CRC calculation loop. So this is where it's good at recognizing constants is it was able to identify that the inner loop was a part of the cyclic redundancy check or CRC. So that saves us from identifying what exactly this function was. And here's a final interesting example where we have a bunch of different strings. If you are older, you might recognize what these are from, but let's see what the large language model has to say about it. So let's name the Kali functions for this. Again, we get a whole bunch of different things. So these are actually strings from IRC messages. So again, if I just keep accepting all of these, we get a lot more contextual awareness for the current function. So all of that was just renamed, right? So we didn't have to mark up any of that stuff. So a lot of busy work that we basically saved ourselves from doing. So here we have a build and send IRC messages function. And here we can see that there's, again, a bunch of different IRC commands that are used to communicate with a given IRC server. And then we have a string tokenization functionality that basically splits on the responses from the return values here. And then those are processed. So pretty nice to read. And it's pretty good at marking up things that are evident in this form. So those are a bunch of different examples that we were able to save a bunch of time with. But overall, I do believe the adoption of AI within this context. So what Vector35 has done with Sidekick is extremely cool. I think they are on the bleeding edge of these reverse engineering technologies. And the fact that they adopted this so quickly is very exciting to see. So I really hope to see more expansion in this space. I really hope to see more people working on these problems, especially using local models where you don't have to worry about privacy issues and things like that. And I'm excited to see what the future brings. So thanks so much for watching and I'll talk to you later.